Chapter 35 The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go to the house of the Rechabites, and speak to them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Then I took Jazaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Habizaniah, and his brothers, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites, and I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Igdaliah, the man of God, which was by the chamber of the princes, which was above the chamber of Masai, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the threshold. I have set before the sons of the house of the Rechabites bowls full of wine and cups, and I said to them, Drink wine. But they said, We will drink no wine. For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, You shall drink no wine, neither you nor your sons forever. Neither shall you build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyards, nor have any but all your days you shall dwell in tents, that you may live many days in the land in which you sojourn. We have obeyed the voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he charged us, to drink no wine all our days, we, our wives, our sons, and our daughters, nor to build houses for us to dwell in. Neither have we vineyards, nor field, nor seed. But we have lived in tents, and have obeyed and done, according to all that Jonadab our father commanded us. But it happened, when Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon came up into the land, that we said, Come, and let us go to Jerusalem, for fear of the army of the Chaldeans, and for fear of the army of the Syrians. So we dwell at Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord to Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, Go and tell the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, Will you not receive instruction to listen to my word, says the Lord? The words of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, that he commanded his sons not to drink wine are performed, and to this day they drink none, for they obey their father's commandment. But I have spoken to you, rising up early and speaking, and you have not listened to me. I have sent also to you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return you now every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and don't go after other gods to serve them, and you shall dwell in the land which I have given to you and to your fathers. But you have not inclined your ear, nor listened to me. Because the sons of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, have performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them, but this people has not listened to me. Therefore thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will bring on Judah and on all the inhabitants of Jerusalem all the evil that I have pronounced against them, because I have spoken to them, but they have not heard, and I have called to them, but they have not answered. Jeremiah said to the house of the Rechabites, Thus says the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, Because you have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according to all that he commanded you. Therefore thus says the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not want a man to stand before me forever. Chapter 36 It happened in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Take a scroll of a book, and write therein all the words that I have spoken to you against Israel and against Judah and against all the nations, from the day I spoke to you, from the days of Josiah even to this day. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I purpose to do to them, that they may turn every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. Then Jeremiah called Baruch the son of Neriah, and Baruch wrote from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the Lord which he had spoken to him on a scroll of a book. Jeremiah commanded Baruch, saying, I am shut up, I can't go into the house of the Lord. Therefore you go, and read in the scroll which you have written from my mouth the words of the Lord 
in the ears of the people in the Lord's house on the fast day. And also you shall read them in the ears of all Judah who come out of their cities. It may be they will present their supplication before the Lord and will turn everyone from his evil way. For great is the anger and the wrath that the Lord has pronounced against this people. Baruch the son of Neriah did according to all that Jeremiah the prophet commanded him, reading in the book the words of the Lord in the Lord's house. Now it happened in the fifth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, in the ninth month, that all the people in Jerusalem, and all the people who came from the cities of Judah to Jerusalem, proclaimed a fast before the Lord. Then read Baruch in the books the words of Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. In the chamber of Gemariah the son of Shaphan the scribe, in the upper court, at the entry of the new gate of the Lord's house, in the ears of all the people. When Micaiah the son of Gemariah the son of Shaphan had heard out of the book all the words of the Lord, he went down into the king's house, into the scribe's chamber, and behold, all the princes were sitting there, Elisha the scribe, and Deliah the son of Shemaiah, and Elnathan the son of Akbor, and Gemariah the son of Shaphan, and Zedekiah the son of Hananiah, and all the princes. Then Micaiah declared to them all the words that he had heard, when Baruch read the books in the ear of the people. Therefore all the princes sent Jehudai the son of Nethaniah, the son of Shalamiah, the son of Cushai, to Baruch, saying, Take in your hand the scroll which you have read in the ears of the people, and come. So Baruch, the son of Neriah, took the scroll in his hand and came to them. They said to him, Sit down now and read it in our ears. So Baruch read it in their ears. Now it happened, when they had heard all the words, they turned in fear one toward another and said to Baruch, we will surely tell the king of all these words. They asked Baruch, saying, Tell us now, how did you write all these words at his mouth? Then Baruch answered them, He pronounced all these words to me with his mouth, and I wrote them with ink in the book. Then said the princes to Baruch, Go, hide you and Jeremiah, and let no man know where you are. They went in to the king and to the court, but they had laid up the scroll in the chamber of Elishama the scribe, and they told all the words in the ears of the king. So the king sent Jehudai to get the scroll, and he took it out of the chamber of Elishama the scribe. Jehudai read it in the ears of the king, and in the ears of all the princes who stood beside the king. Now the king was sitting in the winter house in the ninth month, and there was a fire in the brazier burning before him. It happened when Jehudai had read three or four leaves, that the king cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was in the brazier until all the scroll was consumed in the fire that was in the brazier. They were not afraid, nor tore their garments, neither the king nor any of his servants who heard all these words. Moreover, Elnathan and Deliah and Gemariah had made intercession to the king that he would not burn the scroll, but he would not hear them. The king commanded Jeramiel, the king's son, and Sariah, the son of Azrael, and Shalamiah, the son of Abdeel, to take Baruch, the scribe, and Jeremiah, the prophet, but the Lord hid them. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, after that the king had burned the scroll, and the words which Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah, saying, Take again another scroll, and write in it all the former words that were in the first scroll, which Jehoiakim the king of Judah has burned. Concerning Jehoiakim king of Judah you shall say, Thus says the Lord, You have burned this scroll, saying, Why have you written therein, saying, The king of Babylon shall certainly come and destroy this land, and shall cause to cease from there man and animal? Therefore thus says the Lord concerning Jehoiakim king of Judah, He shall have none to sit on the throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat, and in the night to the frost. I will punish him and his seed and his servants for their iniquity, and I will bring on them, and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and on the men of Judah, all the evil that I have pronounced against them, but they didn't listen. Then Jeremiah took another scroll, and gave it to Baruch, 
the scribe, the son of Neriah, who wrote therein from the mouth of Jeremiah all the words of the book which Jehoiakim, king of Judah, had burned in the fire, and there were added besides to them many like words. Chapter 37 Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, reigned as king, instead of Coniah, the son of Jehoiakim, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. But neither he, nor his servants, nor the people of the land, did listen to the words of the Lord, which he spoke by the prophet Jeremiah. Zedekiah the king sent Jehuchal the son of Shelemiah, and Zephaniah the son of Messiah, the priest, to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Pray now to the Lord our God for us. Now Jeremiah came in and went out among the people, for they had not put him into prison. Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt, and when the Chaldeans who were besieging Jerusalem heard news of them, they broke off from Jerusalem. Then came the word of the Lord to the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Thus shall you tell the king of Judah, who sent you to me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army which has come forth to help you shall return to Egypt into their own land. The Chaldeans shall come again and fight against this city, and they shall take it and burn it with fire. Thus says the Lord, Don't deceive yourselves, saying, The Chaldeans shall surely depart from us, for they shall not depart. For though you had struck the whole army of the Chaldeans who fight against you, and there remained but wounded men among them, yes, they would rise up, every man in his tent, and burn this city with fire. It happened that, when the army of the Chaldeans was broken up from Jerusalem for fear of Pharaoh's army, then Jeremiah went forth out of Jerusalem to go into the land of Benjamin to receive his portion there in the midst of the people. When he was in the gate of Benjamin, a captain of the guard was there whose name was Erijah, the son of Shelemiah, the son of Hananiah. And he laid hold on Jeremiah the prophet, saying, You are falling away to the Chaldeans. Then Jeremiah said, It is false, I am not falling away to the Chaldeans. But he didn't listen to him, so Erijah laid hold on Jeremiah and brought him to the princes. The princes were angry with Jeremiah and struck him, and put him in prison in the house of Jonathan the scribe, for they had made that the prison. When Jeremiah was come into the dungeon house and into the cells, and Jeremiah had remained there many days, then Zedekiah the king sent and fetched him, and the king asked him secretly in his house and said, Is there any word from the Lord? Jeremiah said, There is. He also said, you shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon. Moreover, Jeremiah said to king Zedekiah, Wherein have I sinned against you, or against your servants, or against this people that you have put me in prison? Where now are your prophets who prophesied to you, saying, The king of Babylon shall not come against you, nor against this land? Now please hear, my lord the king, please let my supplication be presented before you that you not cause me to return to the house of Jonathan the scribe, lest I die there. Then Zedekiah the king commanded, and they committed Jeremiah into the court of the guard, and they gave him daily a loaf of bread out of the baker's street, until all the bread in the city was spent. Thus Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard. Chapter 38 Shephatiah the son of Matan and Gedaliah the son of Pashur, and Jukal the son of Shelemiah, and Pashur the son of Malchijah, heard the words that Jeremiah spoke to all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, He who remains in this city shall die by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he who goes forth to the Chaldeans shall live, and his life shall be to him for a prey, and he shall live. Thus says the Lord, this city shall surely be given into the hand of the army of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. Then the princes said to the king, Let this man, we pray you, be put to death, because he weakens the hands of the men of war who remain in this city, and the hands of all the people, in speaking such words to them. 
for this man doesn't seek the welfare of this people, but the hurt. Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand, for the king is not he who can do anything against you. Then they took Jeremiah and cast him into the dungeon of Malchijah the king's son that was in the court of the guard, and they let down Jeremiah with cords. In the dungeon there was no water but mire, and Jeremiah sank in the mire. Now when Abedmelech the Ethiopian, a eunuch, who was in the king's house, heard that they had put Jeremiah in the dungeon, the king then sitting in the gate of Benjamin, Abedmelech went forth out of the king's house and spoke to the king, saying, My lord the king, these men have done evil in all that they have done to Jeremiah the prophet, whom they have cast into the dungeon and he is likely to die in the place where he is because of the famine, for there is no more bread in the city. Then the king commanded Abedmelech the Ethiopian, saying, Take from here thirty men with you, and take up Jeremiah the prophet out of the dungeon before he dies. So Abedmelech took the men with him, and went into the house of the king under the treasury, and took their rags and worn-out garments, and let them down by cords into the dungeon to Jeremiah. Abedmelech the Ethiopian said to Jeremiah, Put now these rags and worn-out garments under your arms under the cords. Jeremiah did so. So they drew up Jeremiah with the cords, and took him up out of the dungeon, and Jeremiah remained in the court of the guard. Then Zedekiah the king sent, and took Jeremiah the prophet to him, into the third entry that is in the house of the Lord. And the king said to Jeremiah, I will ask you a thing. Hide nothing from me. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, If I declare it to you, will you not surely put me to death? And if I give you counsel, you will not listen to me. So Zedekiah the king swore secretly to Jeremiah, saying, As the Lord lives, who made us this soul, I will not put you to death, neither will I give you into the hand of these men who seek your life. Then said Jeremiah to Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, If you will go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then your soul shall live, and this city shall not be burned with fire, and you shall live and your house. But if you will not go forth to the king of Babylon's princes, then shall this city be given into the hand of the Chaldeans, and they shall burn it with fire, and you shall not escape out of their hand. Zedekiah the king said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who are fallen away to the Chaldeans, lest they deliver me into their hand and they mock me. But Jeremiah said, They shall not deliver you. Obey, I beg you, the voice of the Lord, and that which I speak to you. So it shall be well with you, and your soul shall live. But if you refuse to go forth, this is the word that the Lord has shown me. Behold, all the women who are left in the king of Judah's house shall be brought forth to the king of Babylon's princes, and those women shall say, Your familiar friends have set on you, and have prevailed over you. Now that your feet are sunk in the mire, they are turned away back. They shall bring out all your wives and your children to the Chaldeans, and you shall not escape out of their hand, but they shall be taken by the hand of the king of Babylon, and you shall cause this city to be burned with fire. Then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, Let no man know of these words, and you shall not die. But if, but if the princes hear that I have talked with you, and they come to you, and tell you, Declare to us now what you have said to the king, Don't hide it from us, and we will not put you to death. Also what the king said to you. Then you shall tell them, I presented my supplication before the king, that he would not cause me to return to Jonathan's house to die there. Then all the princes came to Jeremiah and asked him, and he told them according to all these words that the king had commanded. So they left off speaking with him, for the matter was not perceived. So Jeremiah abode in the court of the guard until the day that Jerusalem was taken. Don't rebuke an older man, but exhort him as a father the younger men as brothers, the elder women as mothers, and the younger as sisters in all purity. Honor widows who are widows indeed. But if any widow has children or grandchildren, 
let them learn first to show piety toward their own family and to repay their parents, for this is acceptable in the sight of God. Now she who is a widow indeed and desolate has her hopes set on God and continues in petitions and prayers night and day. But she who gives herself to pleasure is dead while she lives. Also command these things that they may be without reproach. But if anyone doesn't provide for his own, and especially his own household, he is denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Let no one be enrolled as a widow under sixty years old, having been the wife of one man, being approved by good works, if she has brought up children, if she has been hospitable to strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has relieved the afflicted, and if she has diligently followed every good work. But refuse younger widows, for when they have grown wanton against Christ they desire to marry, having condemnation because they have rejected their first pledge. Besides, they also learn to be idle, going about from house to house, not only idle, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things which they ought not. I desire, therefore, that the younger widows marry, bear children, rule the household, and give no occasion to the adversary for reviling. For already some have turned aside after Satan. If any man or woman who believes has widows, let them relieve them, and don't let the assembly be burdened, that it might relieve those who are widows indeed. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and in teaching. For the scripture says, You shall not muzzle the ox when it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. Don't receive an accusation against an elder, except at the word of two or three witnesses. Those who sin, reprove in the sight of all, that the rest also may be in fear. I charge you in the sight of God, and Christ Jesus, and the elect angels, that you observe these things without prejudice, doing nothing by partiality. Lay hands hastily on no one, neither be a participant in other men's sins. Keep yourself pure. Be no longer a drinker of water only, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. Some men's sins are evident, preceding them to judgment, and some also follow later. In the same way also there are good works that are obvious, and those that are otherwise can't be hidden. Let as many as are bondservants under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, that the name of God and the doctrine not be blasphemed. Those who have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brothers, but rather let them serve them, because those who partake of the benefit are believing and beloved. Teach and exhort these things. If anyone teaches a different doctrine, and doesn't consent to sound words, the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he, he is conceited, knowing nothing, but obsessed with arguments, disputes, and word battles, from which come envy, strife, reviling, evil suspicions, constant friction of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. Withdraw yourself from such. But godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into the world, and we certainly can't carry anything out. But having food and clothing, we will be content with that. But those who are determined to be rich fall into a temptation and a snare, and many foolish and harmful lusts, such as drown men in ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some have been led astray from the faith in their greed, and have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, men of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of the eternal life to which you were called, and you confess the good confession in the sight of many witnesses. I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate testified the good confession, that you keep the commandment without spot, blameless, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which in its own times he will show, who is the blessed and only ruler, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and eternal power, Amen. Charge those who are rich in this present world that they not be haughty, nor have their hope set on the uncertainty of riches, but on the living God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. 
that they do good, that they be rich in good works, that they be ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold of eternal life. Timothy, guard that which is committed to you, turning away from the empty chatter and oppositions of the knowledge which is falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Psalm 90 A Prayer by Moses, the Man of God Lord, you have been our dwelling place for all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn man to destruction, saying, Return, you children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as they sleep. In the morning they sprout like new grass. In the morning it sprouts and springs up. By evening it is withered and dry. For we are consumed in your anger. We are troubled in your wrath. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days have passed away in your wrath. We bring our years to an end as a sigh. The days of our years are seventy, or even by reason of strength eighty years, yet their pride is but labor and sorrow, for it passes quickly and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger, your wrath according to the fear that is due you? So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Relent, Yahweh, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your loving kindness, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work appear to your servants, your glory to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be on us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Like cold water to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Like a muddied spring in a polluted well, so is a righteous man who gives way before the wicked. It is not good to eat much honey, nor is it honorable to seek one's own honor. Like a city that is broken down and without walls, is a man whose spirit is without restraint.